skeletal traction is usually applied for fractures of the femur. In this presentation, the surface anatomy and the placement of the pins will be demonstrated. The objective of the exercise is to show the application of skeletal traction. Skeletal traction is indicated for fractures of the femur. The patient should lie on his or her back. The pin may be placed through either the distal femur in the supracondylar area or through the proximal tibia. The knee is bent, making it easier to identify the surface anatomy. First, the prominence of the proximal tibia or tibial tuberosity is located and circled. Next, the patella is identified, followed by the infrapatellar tendon. By turning the leg slightly, the fibular head is presented as the next landmark which makes it possible to locate the peroneal nerve. If the pin is to be inserted through the proximal tibia, it's important that it does not damage the peroneal nerve. A local anesthetic is used. A stab incision is made approximately two and a half centimeters posterior to the tibial tuberosity, avoiding the peroneal nerve. Using a T-handle or drill, the centrally threaded denim pin should be inserted from the lateral to the medial side. Until the thread of the pin is centered in the tibia. The ends of the stirrup are placed over the ends of the denim pin and are secured with screws. The stirrup must rotate around the pin as the patient moves the leg. The pin holes have to be cleaned twice daily with alcohol or another cleaning solution and may be left open. For application in the distal femur, the landmarks are the condyles of the femur, specifically where the femur begins to flare outwards. Insertion through the center of the femur is from medial to lateral, while avoiding the neurovascular structures located at the posterior aspect of the femur. The stirrups are attached to the denim pin in the same manner as before.